Where can offshore wind turbines go? The United States is committed to responsibly developing safe, reliable, offshore renewable energy to power our homes and businesses, provide good paying jobs, and support a thriving economy. Offshore wind development will play an important role in reducing our nation's dependence on fossil fuels and generating more renewable power domestically. In fact, areas of U.S. waters hold the potential to create over 4,200 gigawatts of wind power. Tapping just a fraction of that, 30 gigawatts by 2030, is enough energy to power nearly 10 million homes. You may be wondering, can energy companies just put an offshore wind facility anywhere in the ocean? Not at all. Our federal agencies use a multi-phase public process to tackle the complicated task of identifying potential areas for offshore renewable energy development. Identifying these areas can take years and must happen before permitting the siting and construction of any offshore wind facility. The Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, or BOEM, is the lead federal agency for planning and authorization of offshore renewable energy. BOEM coordinates with tribal nations, federal and state government agencies, ocean users, local communities, and the public to collect the best available data and information to help identify large offshore wind planning zones, known as call areas. BOEM works with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, to put each call area through a rigorous analysis using a process called spatial planning. This forecasting effort helps BOEM identify areas within the call area with the fewest user and environmental conflicts and the highest offshore wind energy potential. Wind energy areas are identified based on many factors. Where is there high demand for renewable energy? Where are the strongest and most consistent winds? Where are the shipping lanes, subsea cables, and submerged landforms? Where is commercial and recreational fishing activity concentrated? Where are areas of wildlife and habitat concern? How might these areas affect view sheds? Spatial planning can often include hundreds of data layers to account for these activities and more. Once all these data layers are collected, analyzed, and incorporated into the program, the model calculates suitability scores in fine-grained detail. This is accomplished by placing a hexagonal grid over the area being mapped and assigning a compatibility score for each data layer. For example, if commercial fishing activity is high in five of the grid cells, these areas would receive a low score to account for the potential conflict. Every other data layer would be scored for conflicts also. The higher the score, the fewer the conflicts, and the more suitable that area will be for offshore wind development. In this way, spatial planning provides valuable information for minimizing space use conflicts and pinpointing environmental concerns. The end product is a detailed color-coded map that highlights areas of high and low suitability based on a comprehensive spatial review of cultural and environmental factors and all the ways that we rely on our oceans. BOEM shares the draft results of this modeling effort with the public for feedback and comment before finalizing wind energy areas. While it's only one part of a lengthy and thorough process, Spatial planning plays an important role to ensure BOEM identifies appropriate areas to harness the power of the nation's offshore wind energy resources. The ocean is a new horizon, an expanse with hope and promise for a sustainable future. Learn more about the U.S. offshore wind energy planning process at www.boem.gov renewableenergy renewable energy.